Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Austin and I make videos about the field of medicine. It's my hope that whether you're in high school, college, or already in medical school, that my videos can help all of you find success in your journey through medicine. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the memory retention program Anki and the correct settings to use to optimize your learning. So whether you're using Anki for the MCAT, for step one, or whatever it might be, I hope that these settings can help you understand Anki better as a program and also to improve your studying routine. I talk about Anki in a variety of other videos that I have on my channel, and I'm gonna link those all up here so you can check them out. But this video is just gonna be about the settings and how to use Anki overall. I thought it would be nice to just have this in one place since I'm always referencing different students in different videos, and it's better to just have my own video talking about the Anki settings. So without further ado, we're gonna get started on this. Let's do it. So first things first, you're going to have to download the Anki program. It's here at apps.ankiweb.net. I'll throw a link for that in the description. But here it explains a little more about what I mentioned before, how the program works. And if you have Windows, you can download it here. And there's also a Mac feature over here. All right, so once you open Anki for the first time, you should get a screen that sort of looks like this. So first thing we're going to do is adjust some of the options and I'll explain to you what each of these mean. So if you click on the wrench kind of right here, you can go to options and first thing we're going to do is you're going to change your steps in minutes to 10 and 1440. I believe the default is 1 and 10. So let me just quickly explain what this means. So when you're learning a card for the first time, there are three options that you can have. So it's either again, meaning that you got the card wrong, so you'll see it again. You can say good, meaning you got it right, and they'll space the card out. Or you can also use the option easy, which will space the card out in a bigger interval. So as I mentioned before, the interval here for graduating a card is one day. So when you get it good, you'll see it again in one day. However, if you think you know the card cold and you want to say easy, you won't see that card again for four days. But you have to be really careful with this because when you do that to a card, that will increase its interval for its entire span of that card. So what that means is you'll see it in four days and then you might see it in like eight days, then 12 days. Instead of the regular interval, which is one, you'll see like one day, then it'll go to like three and then five. So unless you know a card really, really well, I would recommend just sticking with the good option and not using easy because it can space the card out so far that you're not really remembering the card as well. So the good interval is really what the algorithm is designed for. And I think that if you continue to click good with each of your cards, that'll be the best way to maximize your retention. So going back to the steps in minutes, what this means when it's 10 is that when you get a card wrong, you'll see it again in 10 minutes instead of one minute. Because I found that when you see a card again in one minute, you kind of still remember doing that card 60 seconds ago. So it's not really testing your memory. But if you do it in 10 minutes, that's a good amount of time to remember the card. And then 1440 means that's a number of minutes in one day. So when you get it right, you'll see it again in one day. And then it will graduate to the another day interval. So this just makes sure that you know the card really well before you send it off into the graduated phase. So when a card is being learned, it's in the learning phase. So you can get it wrong as many times as you want and that won't affect anything. So you can keep pressing again until you know it really well. But once it graduates, if you get it wrong later on, then you're going to go to relearning the card. And that's something that will re-shrink the interval. So if the original interval is like one day, three days, and five days, and you graduate the card and you get it wrong on, let's say, the fifth day, you'll have to press again and now you're relearning the card. So it'll come back to a one day interval, but instead of going to like a three day and a five day interval, the interval is gonna be shortened because that means you're having trouble memorizing this card. So the algorithm will now make that card, for example, one day, then two days, then four days. So the interval is going to be shorter for that card. So be careful with doing graduating cards too early and pressing again too often to relearn the card because you can end up in a phase where you're doing a ton of reviews every day because your cards are having too short of an interval. So the sweet spot you'll have to find as you use the app, but what I recommend is doing 10 and 1440 for the steps up here in minutes. You can keep all of these the same. You don't have to change anything for these except for 
new cards per day instead of doing 20 new cards I would say do as nine 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 because you don't want to limit the amount of cards you want to do per day you want to do the maximum amount and each day you can adjust how many cards you want to study in the next tab you have reviews so these are the cards that will come back each day that you'll have assigned to review before you learn any new cards so again with the maximum reviews per day you want to do all your reviews not just 200 so change this to 99999 the max amount and then you want to change your maximum interval down here so as I mentioned before as you use this app to study for the MCAT you're gonna be spacing cards out very very far eventually for me like I have some cards I don't see for five months or six months but the maximum interval basically caps that to a certain range so the number of days I would say is good would be about 180 days so this is about five months because there's 30 days in a month times five is 180 and so what I found is that when cards start getting spaced out six or seven months it gets really hard to retain that information because you're only seeing this card now once or twice a year but I think five months is a good ground so when you build up that card from one days three days five days all the way up to five months you'll know it so well that it'll be like second nature and that's what's worked for me and you can feel free to adjust that as you use the app and as you study and learn how what works for you you don't need to change anything here in lapses except for the leech action so what it's saying here is that when you get a card wrong so when you're relearning a card this is what the lapse feature is you don't want the latch the card to get suspended after you want it to be tagged so suspending a card means you're basically just canceling it so you're not gonna see it anymore it will suspend it so that you won't uh, see it when you're studying but just because you get a card wrong eight times which is the leech threshold you don't want to just suspend that card because you're gonna want to know that for your MCAT so instead you'll just tag it so they'll have like a flag on there so you'll know that okay I seem to be getting this concept wrong repeatedly but you'll still see the card because obviously you want to retain that information for when you take your MCAT step one or any other exam that you might be using Anki to study for all right, you shouldn't need anything else on these other tabs here. All right, yep, nothing there, and you should be good to go now. So that's all I have for today's video, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked what you watched today, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I try to bring reliable content and helpful medical information to all of you in the best way possible. If you're interested in interacting with other pre-meds or medical students, I have a Facebook page that a lot of students interact with each other and ask questions and just get to know me a little bit better because I can interact with you easier through Facebook than on YouTube. So the link will be in the description to join that group. So don't forget to do that if you're interested and I hope all of you have a wonderful rest of your day.